Hello everyone, this is Roxas only 59 welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Without further ado, let us start up a new game on Final Mix Proud with manual camera and vibration on the DualShock 4. Now before I begin and proceed, I should mention I will be muting Utada Hikaru's hit single, Simple and Clean, for the simple reason of this. It is copywritten like crazy. Anything by Utada Hikaru is very, very much copywritten. And as a result, if YouTube even hears that song, it will generally mute the entire video and or give you a possible copyright strike. So as a result, I will be replacing it with a remix by Carbohydro M known as Rising Sun. Thanks again to Carbohydro M for allowing me to use the song. Go on and check the description to see any more of their remixes. They are pretty dang good. So without further ado, let's start. I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this for real? Or not? And now going from really good CG cutscenes to cleaned up PS2 models. Thank goodness they fixed the overly large text from the PlayStation 3's version of 1.5 because let me tell you that text was extremely large for this section for some odd reason. And now for something new to the series. Well not new to the series because 2.8 came out before this but 60 frames per second. Yes, the cutscenes in the game run at 30 frames per second. The 
gameplay itself runs at 60, it's probably because uh, you'll probably notice it later in the game with some interesting glitches. But uh, what are the controls of this game? Left analog stick to move around. Right analog stick is now relegated to the camera. Before, I believe it used to be the L2 and R2 buttons to do the camera in the PlayStation 2 version of the game. Uh, hit the touchpad, and that's basically the select button, which you go into a first-person mode. Can't really walk around or do anything with it, unfortunately. Uh, other controls, circle button is to jump. X button is going to be for attacking and selecting things. This was... This is actually different in the Japanese version of the game, where circle is used for selecting things, X is used for jumping. That's going to trip me up a lot because I've played a lot of Japanese Final Mix, to say the least. And... Mm, yeah, I think that takes care of controls for right now, so let's go into the light. Choose well indeed. This right here is a very important choice for you in the game. This right here determines your starting stats and how you will be built up throughout the rest of the game, as well as when you learn certain abilities. So, you need to choose wisely with this. So, since we're playing on Final Mix Proud, I always tend to go for the shield, because the shield will give you... The most rounded of the stats, as well as the maximum slot for items in the game. So, I will choose this power. Now, what do I mean by item slots? If you choose the staff, you're relegated only to six item slots at max, which is kind of annoying. And if you choose the shield, you're relegated to eight item slots, and the sword, only seven. Um, the sword is generally the easier path for doing, but I like having me some defense. Now, what we have to give up also determines how rounded we'll be. If I give up the staff, for example, I will only have one ability point at my disposal. And I'm going to have a lot of abilities that I need. So, if I give up the sword, I will have three. But at the same time, I will be sacrificing strength and relegating myself to more magic choosing the shield giving up the sword makes you the most well-rounded out of all the choices you could do and that's what roxas wants to do so goodbye sword yes Really, the first choice is kind of the more important one, but since I want a lot of ability points, giving up the sword is also a good choice. So, this is the form I choose. So, press the X button to attack, and someone needs to show this kid how to use a shield properly. So, the green and blue gauges display your health and magic. Since we ended up choosing the shield and giving up the sword, we have two MP to work with, as opposed to the... Uh, three that we'd get if we had more if we had chosen the staff and really MP you would have still had the same if you had you know picked the sword and given up the staff or basically what I'm saying is you always have two MP or three MP it's really more about the you know ability points that I wanted but if you run out of HP you will be taken to the continue screen and if you run out of magic 
then don't worry, there are drops that will give you magic. Magic was really overhauled in Kingdom Hearts 2, so no worries. Well, actually, major worries. Major worries, because this is Kingdom Hearts 1, and Kingdom Hearts 1's magic is kind of... not fun. Someone needs to teach this kid how to, you know, how, how to use a shield properly. Like, you know, to defend yourself. Like, I don't know, guard? But you defeat enemies, you gain experience, you know, standard things. And enemies will leave items behind. Yes, I will be getting more into this and we'll be bioing what enemies drop. Enemies will drop items for synthesis. And synthesis is necessary in order to complete Gemini's journal, so we will be doing that, which means that the RNG gods will not be looking kindly upon me in this playthrough. And you can walk up to the items. You'll know that there are two types of items that drop from an enemy. There, well, sometimes three. There are items that use to heal yourself or restore magic. Those are generally in blue boxes, uh, sort of dark blue with yellow lines on the outside. There is our synthesis items, which are red with white little lines on it. And finally, there are items or accessories that you can equip to your character that can boost things like defense, magic, ability points, things such as that. Those are in bright blue with white lines. Uh, those are kind of the rarer drops to say the least. And luckily, unlike other Kingdom Hearts games, where enemy item drops tend to change as the game progresses, Kingdom Hearts 1 keeps the same item drops throughout the entire game, so I only have to buy them once. The one that's really annoying with that is uh, 358 over two days, which is why I didn't buy items in that game. At this point, I'm rambling though, so let's continue. Yes, I know, I just explained all this. Now, we're going to learn about lock-on. Generally, you'll automatically target the nearest enemy. This is auto lock-on. Auto lock-on will change depending on how many enemies are around you. So, a way to, you know, avoid this is to hit the R1 button to do a specific lock-on. Like so. Oh, I hate these little guys. They're adorable, but I hate them. And they're not polygonal horrors like they were inside of 358 over two days. I'm not going to say their names yet or bio them yet because we we can't get any items from them yet. So, no need in bioing them. Oh boy. It's taking the floor is lava to a new extreme. Alright, and now to get into what was changed in the HD 1.5 remix, which is Triangle Commands. This is a field icon. It pops whenever a special command is available. Originally, in the original Kingdom Hearts and the original Kingdom Hearts final mix on the PlayStation 2, the field icons would show up on the bottom of the menu that is in the left-hand corner. And what you would have to do is you would have to scroll down to that command and then hit it when no enemies are around. If enemies are around, you could not do things such as open chests or um, access certain doors or things that required it. As a result, to streamline this game, they put the triangle command in in order to, you know, allow you to still open things up. I think that it won't appear still during battle, but I could be wrong. It's been a, quite a few years since I've last played Kingdom Hearts 1. At the same time, this causes a couple of glitches in the game and makes farming one specific item very difficult unless you do certain tricks in order to do it. And that's going to be annoying later in the game. Luckily, I'm not going for all items since that's not necessary to complete Gemini's journal, but I digress. So, triangle command. Well, yes, you can't open it because it's kind of, you know, see-through. Somebody put a little bit of a, you know, transparency on it. But, 
Here we have chess. As I mentioned before, chests were once on the open command on the attack menu, and now they're just you just open them with the triangle button. Streamlines it, makes it more simple. Simple and clean. It's the way that we're feeling tonight. It's hard to let it go. Okay, so you can push this, or you can just speed things up and just attack it. So, sometimes destroying objects yields items. This rarely happens. So, you'll be more than likely getting items from, you know, the enemies when they drop them, or through buying them, or even synthesis for that matter. Okay, so lock on. You can change lock on with the L2 button, something that for some odd reason was not working for me in Kingdom Hearts 2, 2 in the HD 1.5 and 2.5 collection. But I digress about that too. I already did my time with that game. I might do that game again in the future if I so see fit. But let's examine the door and get to another major choice of the game that will determine how our journey will be and whether or not it will be difficult. Here's a little spoiler, it's gonna be difficult. Oh, why thank you, I happen to be a chatterbox. Yes, I know the touchpad can be used for, you know, first person view. You have no reason to ever use first person view to say the least. So this right here is another choice that determines how your run through of Kingdom Hearts 1 will be. Only this game does this to my knowledge. Well, Dream Drop Distance has sort of a variation on this and you use it to unlock the secret ending, which kind of sucks, really. This has no bearing on the deep dive secret ending, but this will determine how hard it will be for us to level up. So first things first, let's talk to good old Waka. What do you want most in life? To see rare sights, to broaden my horizons, to be strong. Now, how does this choice work? Well, if you choose everything on the top level right here for all three of the characters, Waka, Titus, and Selfie, then your journey, it will say, will begin at dawn. What that means is you will be able to level up fast early in the game. But once you hit, I believe, I want to say it's level 50. Once you hit level 50, your leveling up slows to a complete crawl. And it takes a long time to level up in the later levels. I'd like to remind people that in Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, you end up going all the way to level 100, as opposed to other Kingdom Hearts games, which caps off at 99. This is the only game that goes to 100. I don't know why they... You know, didn't continue that trend, but oh well. Anyway, in this case, if you start in midday, which is by selecting all the middle options for Waka, Titus, and Selfie, you will pretty much be balanced in how you level up. You won't level up faster in the beginning, but you won't level up slower in the beginning either. But what we're going to do is the hard method. We're going to be choosing all the bottom ones making our journey begin in the dead of night meaning that it's going to be difficult to level up beginning of the game for the first 50 levels but the later 50 levels oh we go by super fast which is what i personally like doing for those that do not know this channel or know me let me just say i am a grinding addict i love to just turn off my brain and grind up at the earliest possible points for those who are currently watching the Final Fantasy 12 International, or the Zodiac Age, it is now known as playthrough, you know how bad I am with grinding in tutorial areas. So, we're going to be strong. We're going to talk to Titus. What am I afraid of? Being indecisive. This one holds truth. And selfie. My prized possessions. Honestly, friendship is more of what's important to me and we don't need to be number one because we are number one always remember that i should mention if you choose two options on one tier and then one on another it will default to what you chose the most of so in this case since i've chosen two inside of 
the bottom tier if I choose this one for being friendship and actually be, you know, honest about this, then it will still start me at the dead of night. But since I am just going all through this, we'll just say my prized possessions. Collecting neat things is fun. Yeah, the dead of night. Yeah, this sounds good. What does that mean? Hello, light. So, press the options button to open up the menu screen. In the main menu, you can do things like view your inventory and status or configure your game settings. However, you cannot open the menu during battle. Since the PS4 does not have a pause button, a start button for that matter, they relegated that to that and the share button does what you pretty much expect the share button to do. Look at the adorable little things. And they're surrounding me. Yeah. Beat them up, 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 beat them up. They only give you one experience. That's not good. No, don't jump up. Please don't jump up. Ouch. You know, somebody should teach this kid really how to use a shield. Just saying. You can avoid a lot of hits. And you can do the lightning like that, like parry. Parry! There really, there really isn't a parry system in this game. Ooh, hello, light. What does little light on the ground mean? Well, this... is a save point. Save points will restore your HP and MP, and inside of the HD 1.5 remix, as well as HD 1.5 and 2.5, you can end up uh, accessing and returning to the main menu or to the selection of games that you so wish to choose from in the collection. Well, more so return to the main menu. Something that was not inside of the original game was the return to title screen function. So let's hit the start button. Here are our items. We have our stock. We have just the one potion. Here's our equipment, which is just the dream shield. We can't examine that. But here's something that I want to get into last. Abilities. Here we have Shared, and here we have Sora, our main character. And as you can see, we already have an ability. An ability that was added into HD 1.5. Experience Zero. Entire party gains no experience. This is how you do what is known as a level one run of Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. This was added into the HD 1.5 collection. This was not inside the original Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. What this does is pretty self-explanatory. You gain no experience at all, but you do gain a slight boost to your attack strength. I think it's a 1.25 boost to your attack strength, but again, you stay at level one. As a result, I will not be doing this. I do not like doing level one runs in Kingdom Hearts 1 because in Kingdom Hearts 1, you learn the ability guard based on actually leveling up. A level one run in Kingdom Hearts 2 and inside of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is a lot more feasible because of the fact that you end up learning guard either automatically having it in Birth by Sleep's case or in the case of Kingdom Hearts 2, you get it through a, another type of level up, which is a special one that shows up inside of, um, what is it called? That shows up inside of Kingdom Hearts 2. But here are everything that we have in the status screen. As you can see, we will level up in 11 more enemies we kill. And that's pretty much everything. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This has been Roxas1359. Next time, we'll be going up the stairs 
am finishing up the first little tutorial section of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. See you all next time.